This edition of whatever it is you're watching is brought to you by... Ridley Report. Ridley Report. Something, 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 something. Ridley Report. Tonight on Free Minds TV, we're going to be talking about Britain hacking home PCs like never before. We're also going to be talking about the Army lowering its recruiting standards yet again. This time, it's fat people. Also, Homeland Security is going to be using blimps, of all things. We've got the Downsizer Dispatch and a Will Buchanan Walk for Liberty update, plus a whole lot more tonight on Free Minds TV. And welcome to a brand new edition of Free Minds TV, where we challenge you, the viewer, to think outside the box. With you, as always, is Toby. And Nick. All right, we've got a ton to talk about today. We're going to be getting into the Army, wanting more fat people. Uh, previously, they didn't take them. They're going to be taking some more now. We'll be bringing the story on that as well as a whole lot more. But first, we want to do an update. Day. This is a story we've been covering for a while now. I think eight months ago, just over eight months ago is when it started with Will Buchanan walking coast to coast starting in Oregon on one side of the coast and walking all the way to New Hampshire as a part of the Free State Project and the Walk for Liberty. Um, he was able to reach New the New Hampshire border a little while ago. We had the video of that on one of the past episodes. That's up at freemindstv.com. Check out the archives of him actually crossing the border to New Hampshire. But he has finally completed his journey, which ended in Hampton Beach on the ocean at the other side of the country on the East Coast. And he has finally completed this. He did this on uh, December 31st, New Year's Eve, completed the Walk for Liberty. And afterwards, as you can see, quite a few people to celebrate this decided to bear it all and jump into the freezing cold temperatures. I think the temperatures out there were something like 10, 15 degrees out on the beach, definitely with snow on the ground. One of the brave people, Mike Barsky, one of the, behind the camera, he's one of the people in the video that you're seeing right up there on the screen, crazily jumping right into the depths of the ocean. I don't know, it seems a little frigid to me. I don't know if I'd do that, but definitely congratulations to the people who jumped in the water, but really to Will Buchanan who walked, I think it's 3,200 miles coast to coast or a little bit more. That sounds about right. All to promote more freedom, the Free State Project, and you know what, there's a difference between right, left, blue, red, there's also freedom. Uh, it has nothing to do with Republicans and Democrats, but he's trying to promote that, walking around, visiting people. Lots of stories, you can check out more on that with the archives at freemindstv.com or check out his site, walkforliberty.com. I think he made a video every day of his walk and it's posted up there, so good job to him. Yeah, it's a good way to see the whole country too. I mean, if you don't have time to walk across it yourself, he took the time to take videos pretty much every day. I'm not sure if it was every day, but it was pretty it was much often, every day. It was often, and he also talked along the lines of different concepts of liberty and freedom that people can learn a little bit from as well. So it's not just boring him walking. It's his, his story across America and freedom and liberty story along with it. So it's kind of like reversing the movement out west. Now he's moving to New Hampshire for more freedom and more liberty. All right, we got to move on, though. There's lots of stories to cover here, stuff to make fun of. First of all, it's the Army. We've made fun of them in the past when they lowered their recruiting standards to accept older people into the recruits. I mean, you know, I have nothing against old people. I, I, I'm not trying to be ageist here, but there's a certain point where uh, when you get into your 40s and later in life that pro probably the Army isn't the best place for you. But anyway, some people want to join the Army. Tough recruiting market said, oh, all right, we'll give a lot of them waivers. They also started doing it with felons. We reported on that. And now they have begun doing it with overweight people. Um, they've begun last year in 2007, I guess it's a little over last year because it's 2009 now. Uh, they began doing this pilot project and expect to do more of it in the still tough recruiting market. They do expect things to go a little bit better this year as the economy starts to fail. There's jobs security in the army you can always go kill people for hire but and supposedly keep the country free while you're doing it uh, more on that later but uh, what I have a problem with this is it's going to t cost tax dollar uh, taxpayers more money in the end previously to accept accepting fat people you had to uh, do a certain workout if you didn't do it in, uh, in the satisfactory amount of time I'm not sure what their standards were but if you weren't physically fit enough to go to boot camp well I'm sorry you don't go to boot camp now what they're doing is they're sending you to uh, basically a fat camp where tax doll, uh, payers get to shape you up and uh, you get paid money to be in fat camp and get put into shape previously you had to do it on your own now I get to pay for it guess what I don't want to pay for it. You're fat. That's your problem. I'm 
sorry. I'm really going to be overweight myself, but I, I, I don't want to pay for you to go lose weight so you can join the army and go kill people. Uh, some people might like that personally. Do it on your own. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, well, it seems like if you're going to join the army, you're making a commitment of usually four years of your life. It's two active duty sometimes or something like that. You're, um, you're probably going to have to make the commitment to lose weight either way if you actually want to join the army and you're not just doing it because you're out of a job. So it seems to me that that would be a step that people who actually wanted to join would take. Right. If you don't have the discipline to lose the weight, maybe the army isn't the place for you. Well, I guess some people do a lot better if they have someone right behind them telling them, go faster, lose weight. Uh, they couldn't do it on their own. I, they're saying that the program's been successful with their pilot launch and they're going to be starting to do more of it. And who knows? I mean, I just, uh, the problem that I'm seeing with it is maybe you are taking some people that just aren't fit for the army. I mean, if you can't slim down on your own, how disciplined are you? You. But also, why do we, the taxpayers, have to pay for this? Yeah, I mean, well, the bigger question is why do we need a military that, that is that large, that we have to be worried about recruiting as many people as we do. I think if the military was its appropriate size, which would be much, much smaller, if we weren't involved in so many countries around the world, it could be much, much smaller. There would be no problem recruiting people. In fact, you might actually have competition to get placed in the military, as strange as that may sound. So. I think that's the deeper problem here, not necessarily who they're recruiting. But when their recruiting standards start to slip, you can bet that it's because they're having a hard time getting people to join. Well, it's, uh, we'll see. We'll continue to report on how low can the standards go for the military. I think that the Marines and the Air Force are doing a little bit better. It's really the Army that's having the most recruiting problems at this point, at least according to this article. And you can check out our, all our, our show content. It's up on our forums at forum.freemindstv.com. But we must move on across the pond to Great Britain. Police to set up hacking of home PCs. This is from timesonline.co.uk. The Home Office has quietly adopted new plans to allow police across Britain to routinely hack into people's personal computers without any kind of a warrant. Uh, the, this move follows a decision by the European Union's uh, Council of Ministers in Brussels and has angered many, many civil liberty activists. Now, here in the United States, we have this pesky thing called the Constitution that at least allows the government to not publicly come out and say, yes, we're hacking into your PCs without even a warrant. I'm sure Homeland Security is doing it in some cases. I don't know how far out it's there, but at least our government isn't proud of it like they are in the UK and saying, yes, we're doing this to go after cyber terrorism and all other crimes. If we can just plant some kind of a Trojan in someone's computer, see everything that they're doing, all the data that they're typ typing, basically take over their computer and see what they're doing on their computer, we can combat crime. Well, yeah, you could also do it with putting a camera in everybody's house. Why not in every toilet? You could find out all sorts of dirty, nasty things about people if you watch their every move. But I don't want any of that. Do you want that? It's disgusting. How far are people uh, willing to go? It seems like in the UK they're willing to go a lot further than Americans are at the moment. I mean, they already have cameras in virtually every public place. Almost every... well, they have a lot of cameras. I don't know if they can really cover all the ground, but... Odds are good that if you're walking down the street in Britain, you're going to appear on many, many closed circuit TV cameras. I think it's hundreds cameras. and hundreds of times. A I day think it's a couple. Yeah, Britain it's a couple on. hundred a day at least, and that includes people in the countryside too. You're averaging that out, so it's not just in the major cities. Unfortunately, we've seen that starting to come to some cities in the U.S. New York has started to implement that, and I think some other cities have experimented with it. It hasn't gone over very well with the public. But there are people here in the U.S. who would like to implement that. Well, anything to keep you safe. And if we're going to invade everybody else's privacy to keep you, the citizen, safe, well, that's what we need to do. Give up a few of your civil liberties, your, your right to privacy here. See, I consider myself, uh, my computer, everything that I'm not doing online, I know that if I'm online, I consider that pretty much public. People can see where I'm going. Um, anyone who has a little bit of computer knowledge could pretty much track my moves. But I consider the other things that I'm doing, such as like typing a letter in a Word document, I don't want the government seeing that. I mean, if I did, I'd send it to them. Sometimes I do. But when I don't send it to them, I, I don't want them to see it. If you feel differently, though, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, FMTV at freemindstv.com is the email. Uh, we really love to hear your opinions, especially if you disagree. If you're one of those people who thinks that we need the government to get involved in our privacy to keep us safe, 
let us know, fmtv at freemindstv.com. It's interesting to note that the cameras in Britain really haven't done anything for violent crime. So people say, well, if it'll make us safer, we should do it. It doesn't work. It didn't well, work in Britain. They have something like 20 million closed circuit television cameras in that There's not country. enough people. I just read an article recently where they're finding budget deficits in hiring people to watch the cameras, not only in the UK, but also here in the United States. There's not enough people to watch all the cameras that we have going. Uh, so why do we? We have them there just to make some company that makes cameras rich when we buy them and put them up? Pretty much. I think that would probably be the, the most logical oh, explanation. No, the article I read said crime deterrent. We're deterring crime by having these cameras. Okay, put the, the fear of God into people. Think the government's always watching their every move. That's a free society. And criminals don't really care. I They're mean, criminals. They found a way around it. In Great Britain, I mean, wear a ski mask. Find a blind spot in the security grid. It's not that hard to do. And really... It hasn't helped in Britain. It just hasn't. So even if we did it in the United States, spent millions of dollars and sacrificed our privacy, there's no evidence that it actually does anything to reduce crime. No, it, it's ridiculous. And I mean, you can't expect to sacrifice your personal uh, civil liberty and get some kind of protection out of it, anything out of it. I mean, those who, what, what's the quote? Those who sacrifice their liberties for freedom will get and deserve neither. Liberties for security will get neither or deserve neither. Depends on how you quote it. There's some variations on that. The point is, I mean, if you're someone out there that thinks the government can save you if you just give up your freedoms, give your freedoms to them, put your trust in them, they'll keep you safe. It's not true. They're not even, that's not even their job to keep you safe. So, I, I mean, it, the Supreme Court has found many times that the government has no, uh, no um, job duties to keep you safe. It's not their job to keep you safe. As the Supreme Court has ruled that many times, they openly admit it, yet they say, we need to keep you safe, so give up your civil liberties. Don't do it. They did that. They don't have them in Britain, and our pesky constitutions making them at least not proud of it here in the United States, but it's in important to keep track of these things so that when they come to your town, um, you're aware of it. Certainly. Freedom is eternal vigilance. Yeah. I got that one right, right? Yeah, you All did. Right. Excellent. Well, speaking of what you can do in order to fight back against this oppressive government, at least here in the United States, is something called Downsize DC, and we do it by, via the Downsizer Dispatch. Nick, what's up for this week? Um, well, what they're... Downsize DC is announcing, uh, coming back for the new year, is that they've raised all the money for their fundraising goals that they hope to have uh, for all of 2009. So they've already met their fundraising goals for this entire year. Uh, they met, I believe they met it before the new year began. So they're still going to be doing fundraising, um, but what this is going to allow them to do, since their operating costs are covered, is do more outreach, uh, tell more people about things like the Read the Bills Act, which we've talked a lot about here on Free Minds TV, also the Write the Laws Act, the Enumerated Powers Act. There's a lot of things they're trying to do to at least make Congress slow down read the bills before they pass them, and hold them accountable. Make them say where they get the constitutional authority to pass a given piece of legislation. There's a whole lot of great things Downsize DC is trying to do to at least try to slow down the politicians in Washington, DC when it comes to spending your money and taking away your privacy. Um, so go to downsizedc.org. You can check it out. You can sign up for their Downsizer Dispatch email list, um, and I would check out the campaigns there. There's all kinds of things, from general things like the Read the Bills Act that would just apply to Congress in general, all the way down to individual things. I believe there's still campaigns up there about the National Animal ID System. If you're somebody who likes family farms, you probably don't like that government program, and that's a campaign you should check out. So, DC.org. Yeah, there's all sorts of good ways that you can contact those slime balls in Washington, D.C. and let them know that you have an opinion, too, and they shouldn't just vote with whoever gives them the most money, whichever, whichever person well, lines their pockets with the most green cash. Yeah, essentially what this is is they, they do care about money because that helps them essentially buy votes and you know buy sports cars and things. Right. But the votes allow them to make the money, so they're willing to trade off some of their power if they think there's enough people out there who want them to reduce the amount of power that's concentrated in Washington, you know, D.C. It would be interesting to do some kind of a study. I, and Downsize D.C. might already be doing some kind of something like this. But checking out how many uh, contacts a congressman or a senator or any elected official needs to get in order to equal a dollar, say. Uh, is every contact worth a dollar? Is it worth 
worth two dollars? Is it worth a quarter? How much is each contact actually worth? I mean, how much do they care about the people who are just giving them more cash to vote in certain ways versus you telling them that you want them to vote in certain ways? Uh, I'd be interested to see if you have any info on that. Please let us know. All right, Nick, when we come back, we have a lot more to talk about. Some kind of blimp system being used by Homeland Security. It's not the Goodyear blimp. Not the Goodyear blimp and um, some other interesting stuff about global warming. I'm not sure. I haven't seen your articles yet, but I know they're interesting. We'll be getting into those and more when we come back. Stay tuned. This is Free Minds TV. Free Minds TV is brought to you in part by Life Productions for your basic and semi-pro video production needs. From full wedding and event coverage to DVD authoring and distributions, lifeproductions.com, that's L-Y-F productions.com. This edition of whatever it is you're watching is brought to you by... Ridley Report, Ridley Report, something, 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 Ridley Report. Report, Ridley Report, something, 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 Ridley Report. I'm Sam with OTN, and you're watching Free Minds TV, one of the few media sources that asks you to think for yourself. All right, welcome. Welcome back to Free Minds TV. As always, it's Toby here with you. And Nick. If you haven't done so yet, please consider voting for us at, uh, at Podcast Alley. Uh, that it would be done by going to vote.freemindstv.com. That's vote.freemindstv.com. It helps out the audio version of the show as well as Free Minds Radio Weekly Podcast, which is you can also check out at freemindstv.com. But this month, we've been on the top ten list at Podcast Alley for... The greater part of the month, we're just under it right now, but we could flip back. We're on number 10 to 11 to 10 to 11, and it really helps out the show. So if you like Free Minds TV, the number one thing you can do right now is by going to vote.freemindstv.com. Casting us a quick vote. It takes two seconds. Quick email verification, and you've done it. really helps out the show. Yeah, and I think you were saying, what, like a couple, we were getting a couple hundred extra views a day, was yeah, it? I think when it was we were on the front page? Three, so. 300 brand new people every day that we're on the front page, check us out, that wouldn't have otherwise. So you're really spreading the show to more people, so it really helps. All, All right, right, but we do have more show content to get into, a reason to actually watch or listen to this show. And when I uh, was looking at your articles, it has something to do with UFOs and blimps and Homeland Security and... Salt Lake City? Uh, what's going yes. on? Um, well, ABC News, the local affiliate there in Salt Lake City, was reporting on a strange object in the sky. They were kind of casting it as a, is it a UFO? What is it? Um, well, what it actually most likely is, is um, a blimp. I mean, it's clearly a blimp, but why is it there? There. Um, well, Lockheed Martin actually has a contract with Homeland Security. This has been reported on by Brock Meets of MSNBC and a number of blogs. It's still in the research and development phase right now. Um, and I think essentially what they've got is like some little prototype that's floating over U.S. cities. So what they're going to do is get, I think, 11 of these things. They're supposedly, from the other articles I was reading on it, are going to be about 17 times the size of the Goodyear blimp. So they're going to be really big airships. And they're going to float about 12 miles up. And they're going to watch us. Nice. They're surveillance blimps. Um, so instead of having satellites, I guess they figured this would be more cost effective. And they can move them around. Well, more. at least you know when you're going to be watched. There's a giant silver object uh, that looks like a spaceship up in the sky above you, so at least well, you might know if you're watched a little bit more than a satellite. Maybe if it was directly overhead, but uh, I guess from the way... Uh, the video I looked at like, made it look like you're going to, and the video that we've shown here makes it look like it's right there. You can see when uh, these people are watching you. Maybe. I don't know. There's cloud cover, and I think it can cover 600 miles oh, from wow. side to side. Like That's the, nice. the width of its view, so I think that's somewhere from like... Oh, like Cleveland, Ohio, New Okay, York so City. we were talking about uh, last segment about Great Britain and how they're, they have cameras on every street almost in all public places you're on camera. Uh, how much better are we in the U.S. when we have these giant blimps floating around with pretty much being able to cover any part of America? I want to know how this is going to fight terrorism. I mean, you can, it's not really like the movies where they... they pull up the satellite communications and they watch the terrorists as they're driving through. You mean you can't really do that? Well, not with satellites. With oh. the blimps, you might be able to track a car, but 
Yeah, you can do that with a helicopter anyway. I don't really see the need for the blimps to be up there watching all of us. And now people in Canada and Mexico don't have to feel left out. Cuba, too, probably. Oh, because nice. it could be in our airspace. And if the articles I was reading were correct, it can actually watch people in nearby countries with the kind of range it has. Well, Nick, I, I know that you say you don't understand the reason for the Homeland Security spending, I don't know how many, many millions of dollars on these ways to invade our personal privacy anymore. You don't know how it's going to fight terrorism, but that's why you're not in Homeland Security, Nick. These yep. people are keeping well, us safe any way they know how, and if it's flying around in giant blimps and invading our privacy, probably violating um, several constitutional amendments, uh, who cares? That's just the Constitution. We threw that out years ago. They're keeping us safe, Nick. That's all that matters. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how much it does. Well, I, I, the blimp idea is kind of one of the wackier ideas I've heard in a while, but I guess they're the government. So if you come up with an idea and the guy at your bureaucracy likes it and Congress approves it, you're pretty much golden. It's not like a business where you have to worry about whether it makes sense. All right. Uh, we, do, we do have to move on for time purposes here. While it's ridiculous, we must move on to something else that I've always found a little bit ridiculous and it's those chicken little people who say the sky is falling about this or the sky is falling about that that I actually fell for this for this little thing uh, when I was in high school I was watching a video and I was also preached to by many of my high school teachers about the scare of global warming and how this was something that's creeping on us so fast that by the time 2010 rolls around Florida won't exist we're all going to be underwater the world will end as we know it by 2010 if something's not done immediately. Now that was nearly, I think that was over 10 years ago um, that that happened, that I was told about that. And I got real upset and real scared about it. Didn't know what I could do to end this global warming after it is, I'm only one of uh, over 6 billion people on this planet. How much can I actually do? But it got me real worried until I started looking at some of the numbers. And I think that you're going to confirm this for me that in the next year, we're not all going to be underwater and the world is not going to end. The sky is actually not falling. It could have just been maybe some leaves or an acorn or something like that. <laughs> well, um, here's the deal. Basically, if the entire North Pole, the Arctic sea ice, completely melted, it wouldn't affect sea levels at all because that stuff floats on the ocean, which displaces the water. So, Like an ice cube in a glass, when it melts, my glass doesn't suddenly overfill. That's right. I thought that it did, though. I've always <laughs> been real careful when I fill up glasses to fill them up this much water and then ice so that it doesn't overfill when my ice melts. That's, no, it I've doesn't. I've just been a fool this no. whole time. Actually, it shrinks when it melts, so oh. it doesn't make much sense. Man. But thanks to a rapid rebound in recent months, global sea ice levels now equal those seen 29 years ago when the year 1979 drew to a close. They're growing? It's, well, it's bounced back and, and we I was are, told that they'd be shrinking and gone by now and flooding us. Yeah, it, it seems like they were wrong about that. Um, oh. Researchers had expected that newer sea ice, which is thinner, would be less resilient to, uh, um, to warm weather and would melt easier, not rebound as quickly. Well, they forgot to factor in the fact that thinner ice doesn't have all that snow on top and the snow doesn't insulate it, mm. so it actually grows faster. Science is uh, something that well, you should be done objectively, and that's, I think, the problem with so, a lot of uh, this research is it's really focusing in on, yes, there is global warming going on, and we're yeah. here to prove it rather than investigating well, and seeing what's actually clearly, going they were on. predicting that the Arctic could be ice-free this year, and now there's really no, no evidence that that's likely to happen. And it just goes to show, if they can't predict it this year, if they're wrong about this year, the same people who are predicting 50-year climate models that didn't really anticipate this or any of the cooling we've had over the last couple of years, what good are they? I mean, they claim to know a lot. They claim to know a lot more than they apparently do. Man, just and today on I hope people will realize that. I mean, they get the weather wrong. They can't predict two days in advance. I mean, so they, so they get it wrong often the night before, and how are they actually predicting years down the road? Now, look, I know a lot of you greenies out there um, are very upset with me right now and saying, yes, there's global warming going on. Well, we prefer to call it climate change now because, well, we know it's not global warming. Yeah, it's probably not good to pollute the environment. I'm not saying that it is. And, and probably driving all these smog polluting cars around is not a good thing. But government is not the answer. And spending billions and billions of dollars on research to just prove its own research and create, using your tax dollars to fund the, all this stuff, I mean, what's it done for us? Nothing, except made a lot of people worried, including yourself. And you know what? I think that if you really want to make a change, be the change you want to see in the world. Uh, drive a, 
a vegetable-powered car or walk or ride a bike. It's probably good for you anyways, but don't get the government involved. It just wastes our money. Actually, uh, I think it was the leader of Greenpeace in Britain said you're better off, I think, it, obviously you're better off biking than anything, but you're better off walking, uh, driving than walking most Yeah, places. we actually covered that story because the amount of calories it takes to walk now Oh, this doesn't count for anyone who needs to lose weight because you just should eat less calories and that will preserve the world. <laughs> but um, <laughs> for people who actually need calories when they walk, they need the extra calories to walk to maintain their regular body level, it actually costs more to grow the food that to intake the calories right. than it would to save and the energy more and drive. Right, there's more carbon output. So if you're walking to save the world, and you're probably screwing it up somehow. Uh, now, I'm not saying that, you know, good intentions are great, but I wish that people would do a little bit, bit more research well, before they decide to change their lifestyle in a way that doesn't actually make a positive impact. And I know I, it's probably a positive impact to walk because uh, well, well, for it's you, easier for me because the streets are less congested. Yeah. So if you walk, I can drive faster because there's less cars in the road. I mean, that's a win-win for me. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I think the main point that needs to be taken away from this is don't believe everything you read. Don't believe everything we say. Check out our news articles. They're posted at forum.freemindstv.com. Look at them yourself, then look at some others. Then start to put together a picture before rushing to government to save you from something you're not sure about. Because you know what? They're gonna do a bad job. Even if the big boogie monster is in the closet, they'll screw up and let him go. Yeah, most likely. I, I really haven't heard too many ideas that they're coming out with that make a whole lot of sense. The, even their own models are saying, even if they introduce pretty draconian measures, we're not actually going to be able to reduce the amount of CO2 for like 20 years. Like and it's it, disputed I mean, if it's uh, the ch uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg, the CO2 or the global warming. I mean, that's not even defined. The warming is right kind now. of up in the air too. I mean, is it, it got it's warmer been for a while lately? So I mean, yeah, there's there's the atmosphere is very complicated. We can't predict. It. It's very hard. On um, probably humans aren't doing a great deal for it. But what are you going to do? Oppress the people in China, oppress the people in India who want to drive cars, who want to have the same lifestyle as you do? I mean, that's the only way. I mean, we're 300 million people, and we're supposedly ruining the planet here in the United States. What about when India industrializes? What about when China does? Well, what are you willing to do about it? China's already the biggest polluter. I know. So what are you willing to do about it? Should we put sanctions on China and say no uh, citizen in China can drive a car because if they all do, we're all going to die? Are you willing to use your tax dollars to declare war on China essentially and make sure that no one buys a car or fires up a coal plant? I mean, what, I mean, what are you going to do to stop it? And nothing, unless you're willing to apply force to people. And yeah. I'm not willing to apply force to people who haven't done anything to me, especially when I uh, do those same th things every day. I drive a car almost every single day to get to work and then get back to work. And I don't think it's fair for me to tell someone else there in another country that I don't even know that they can't drive a car because it'll ruin the uh, earth. I drive a car. I'm not willing to apply force against them uh, in order to save the planet, which I don't know if it would even do that. I mean, it's it's all up in the air. I think that people really should take more of an objective look at this and and s stop listening to all the scare tactics out there. I'm not saying that everything's hunky-dory in the world. I mean, there's huge environmental problems that uh, yeah. should be addressed, but They're the government is CO2. not the In my opinion, CO2 is kind of a, a, a small thing to be worried about at the moment. There's, there's plenty of real pollution out there that is a, a threat to human health, and we definitely know it is. Um, right. You know, but let's work on the things we know how to fix by ourselves before running to government and trying to solve a problem that might not exist. Sounds good to me. I'm sure one of the topics we've talked about so far tonight has angered you. So let us know. FMTV at FreemindsTV.com is the email. Vote.FreemindsTV.com is what we'd like you to do to help us out this month. And FreemindsTV.com is where you can get all the archives of the show, including... Um, Everything is up at freemindstv.com. We're running out of time, so check out the website for more plugs. It's been Toby here with you. And Nick. Have a great evening, night, day, whatever it is, wherever you're watching us. So. Spread your legs one real quick. There you go. Hands on your head. Yeah, there you go. I see it shaking. It kind of makes me nervous. It's cold outside. Yeah, it's cold? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's this right here? That's my penis. That's your penis. All right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that.
Minds TV is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com.